Ramen is really having its moment in time right now. And I'm not talking the instant kind, I'm talking tonkotsu, I'm talking shoyu. It also happens to be one of the most time consuming soups in the world to make, at least we thought so. So today we're gonna be making three of the most iconic ramens as fast and easy as humanly possible and hopefully we can make them just as good as their longer counterpart. We're gonna be doing our best to keep this as traditional as possible. Tonkotsu, we reduce the amount of cook time by 90%. The shoyu ramen is no longer than about 30 minutes and the miso ramen is even faster. So with all that being said, let's begin. Really quick note, we're on the last leg of my book tour. It's been incredible meeting thousands of you. I'm doing a live Q&A in San Francisco at a new location, by the way. Here are all the places. This is the last chance for the rest of the year for us to get together. So if you are in San Francisco, Dallas, Houston, Austin, I will see you there. All of these events are free. If you already have a book, you don't have to get a ticket. Just come and show up. That being said, on to the video. Let's talk about one thing that's in all of these soups. Obviously, stop. You're gonna see some of these recipes have dashi, which is Japanese sea stock. Oh no, that's not easy, what a- Listen, you got two options. You can replace that with chicken stock very easily, but what if I told you you could make some incredible dashi in 15 minutes or less? We'll start with that, even though it's optional. In a medium-sized pot, add one quart of water and two two-inch squares of kombu. That's just a type of dried seaweed. Heat that over medium heat just until steamy hot. Let that steep for about five minutes, maintaining that steamy heat, but do not let it boil. Then cut off the heat, add one and a quarter cup of bonito flakes, also called katsuobushi, cover with a lid and let that steep for eight to 10 minutes. Then strain that and you have dashi. One more thing, easy toppings. These you can mix and match with any of these ramens. Now they will have their own particular toppings, but these apply to all. Obviously ramen noodles. You can do dry straight ramen noodles, cook them according to package directions. Once your broth of choice is done, then there's a soft boiled egg, which is quite literally boiled for six minutes, ice bath for a minute, peeled and well, soft center. That's it. After they're peeled, of course you can marinate them, but that's up to you. Of course, thinly sliced green onion on any of these bowls works beautifully. And of course, strips of nori, you know, used as a garnish but that's a little bit of flavor. Okay, now onto the actual recipes. Let's talk shoyu ramen. That's a soy sauce based ramen. Heat a saucepan over medium high heat. Add just enough oil to the pan to coat. Add four thinly sliced shiitake mushrooms. Let those sear, stirring occasionally for two to three minutes. Then remove, add the thinly sliced whites from two green onions, followed by two cloves of garlic, lightly crushed but left whole. One inch knob of ginger, grated, saute till fragrant, about 30 to 45 seconds. Then add six cups or roughly one and a half liters of stock. Now remember what I said earlier, that can either be straight up chicken stock or it can be a 50-50 mix of half chicken stock and half dashi. Do whatever's easiest. The most authentic flavor has the dashi in it though. Add a quarter cup or 60 grams of soy sauce, let that liquid come to a boil, then reduce the heat to low and simmer for five to 10 minutes. Now give it a little taste. Season lightly with salt and optionally a touch of shiradashi. That's it, that's your broth. You're done. Literally anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes of work and you have an incredibly flavorful broth. Now, we should maybe make a glazed chicken topping. Heat a large pan over medium high. In a mixing bowl, combine two tablespoons or 30 grams of soy sauce, ideally dark soy sauce, one tablespoon or 18 grams of honey, two teaspoons or 12 grams of light corn syrup, and one clove of garlic, finely chopped. Mix that together, then grab yourself four boneless, ideally skin on chicken thighs. Once your pan is ripping hot, you're gonna place those skin side down and sear for about three minutes. Flip, reduce the heat to medium, and cook for four to six more minutes or until the chicken is cooked through. Then at that point, brush with your glaze, flipping occasionally for about one minute, and you have beautifully glazed glazed chicken thighs ready to shine in your bowl of ramen. So let's assemble it. Large bowl. Add your noodles to the bowl, cover with your broth, followed by your seared shiitake mushrooms from earlier, half of a soft boiled egg or ahitama egg, one to two sliced chicken thighs, and finish with some thinly sliced green onion and a light drizzle of toasted sesame oil. Now, if you sear the chicken while the broth is simmering, in around 15 to 18 minutes, you have a beautiful bowl of ramen. So chicken instead of chashu, super easy to make, it's super fast. You could omit the egg or the mushrooms or both. You could add leftover vegetables to the broth. Give it a little this broth has maternal energy. It nurtures you. The toasted sesame oil, it's rich, it's unctuous, but at the same time, it feels so clean on the palate. I feel good after eating this. And you got the chicken, it's not too fatty, it's not too rich, it's balanced, it's umami due to the maternal qualities and the glutamate elements to this. If there's anything that you make from here, at least make this. Now moving on. Spicy miso ramen. Heat a large pot or rondo over medium high heat. Add a touch of neutral oil just to coat the bottom of the pan. Once that's hot, add a third pound or 150 grams of ground pork, break it up with a wooden spoon, and just let that cook for about four minutes, stirring often until fully cooked through and you get little crispy bits like this. Go in with five thinly sliced shiitake mushrooms. Yes, again, I like mushrooms in my ramen, what can I say? Season lightly with salt and cook, stirring often until softened and beginning to attain a little bit of color. Then add three green onions, thinly sliced, one finely chopped shallot, and a one inch knob of ginger, grated. Season that lightly with salt again, then saute till 
menthol fragrant in about one to two minutes. Yeah, give that a little whiff. Then follow that with one teaspoon or four grams of sugar, one teaspoon or four grams of toasted sesame oil, half a teaspoon or two grams of ground white pepper, two teaspoons or nine grams of dobanjang. You can find it very easily in Asian markets and again on Amazon. But you could also leave it out. You're just gonna be missing the spicy part. One tablespoon or 15 grams of mirin. Let that cook for one minute. And finally add one and a half cups or 360 milliliters of dashi and one quart or 960 milliliters of chicken stock. No exceptions to the dashi. Ah, uh, well, fine, but it's not gonna taste as authentic. Now, add one tablespoon or nine grams of sesame seeds optionally, lightly ground in a mortar and pestle just to make them a little less intrusive. Bring the soup to a boil and cook for three to four minutes. Then cut off the heat and in a fine mesh strainer, plop in three and a half tablespoons or 50 grams of, well, miso. I went with red miso. Stirring and whisking aggressively and you're ready to assemble. All in yet again, around 15 to 18 minutes. You have an impeccable broth. Now, again, add your cooked noodles to a bowl. Little your broth on top to cover the noodles. Half of a soft boiled egg or ahitama egg. You're gonna add a couple spoonfuls of fresh raw corn. I know a lot of people are gonna complain, ew, yucky raw corn. Look, it's one less step to not cook it, plus it's gonna cook in the hot broth. Now follow that with thinly sliced green onion, a little bit of pickled ginger if you want, and finish with a nice generous drizzle of chili oil. Now that is a spicy meatball. Spicy miso ramen. Let me tell you something. One of the few ramens you don't need a tare for. It is the easiest that you can make with the most amount of flavor. So let's dig in. I already know the comments are gonna be like, oh, you have corn in there, that's so gross. Look, they do it in Japan. I'm gonna do it here. This is like one step closer to the richness of tonkotsu without all the effort. You could add more to this, but as it stands alone, for this level of effort, there is not really a better ramen. You're leveraging all that aging process, all the umami developed in a nice miso, and that's what's making this come to life. It's almost a little creamy from the pork fat. I don't think I'd be unhappy giving this at a restaurant, and I would never know that it takes very minimal effort. Now moving on to the hardest, yet the easiest version of the hardest ramen in the game. Tonkotsu, the alpha and omega of ramen. This is known as one of the longest, most difficult ramens to produce, taking upwards of 12 hours of boiling time alone. Surely I didn't find a way to cut that time down to be six times less, right? Well, actually I did, because I love you. To a large pot, add cold water. Then to that, you're gonna add two and a half pounds or 1.1 kilos of pork hocks. And two pounds or 900 grams of pork neck bones. Heat over medium high, then let that boil for about five minutes. Skim any scum that rises to the top of the pot and discard. Then once you're done, dump the bones out into a colander, rinse with cold water, then place your bones into a pressure cooker or Instapot. Add just enough water to cover, and this is key. Add two sheets of gelatin, and carefully on top, place half a pound or 227 grams of solid raw pork fat. Place the lid on, and pressure cook that on high for one and a half hours. Tankotsu is boiled for so long, because it needs to be brought to a point where it has maxed out the amount of gelatin pulled out from the bones you're boiling, while simultaneously emulsifying the broth and the pork fat. By using a tiny bit of added gelatin, we're kind of cheating that process while maxing out the flavor using pressure cooking. So once the timer's up, you release the pressure, and you're thinking, oh, it doesn't look emulsified. Josh lied to me. Don't you worry, Papa's got you. You see, it's ready to be emulsified. So carefully using a spider or a skimmer, remove the cooked fat from the broth and add to a blender. Add some of your broth to the blender, being careful to avoid any solids going in. You'll need about one quart or one liter of broth in there. Blend on high speed until completely smooth, and boom, there's your emulsified broth. Now strain the rest of your unblended broth into a medium-sized pot using a large fine mesh strainer or chinois. Then to your broth, add one bunch of green onion, rough chopped, five cloves of garlic, lightly bruised, a one-inch knob of ginger sliced, add the emulsified broth from your blender. Then I had to switch pots because our pot was too small. Real nice, Josh. Bring that up to heat over medium high until it begins to boil. Then reduce the heat to medium and lightly boil for 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how reduced you want it. Now, your broth is done, except do not season your tonkotsu broth because we need to make tare to season it. Now, to a small saucepan, add a quarter cup or 60 grams of sake, bring to a boil, boil for 30 seconds, then cut off the heat, add half a cup or 120 milliliters of soy sauce, half a cup or 120 milliliters of mirin, and a quarter cup or 60 grams of shirodashi. You can buy all all these things at Asian markets. Protein on this, you can add whatever you want. You wanna add chicken? Fine. You wanna add pork loin? Fine. You wanna add leftover meat? Fine. We already had some chashu in the fridge, so I sliced it a quarter inch thick and torched it until lightly charred and hot. Now, get yourself a bowl. Add your tare into the ramen bowl. Add as much as you want. You may need to add more. Season your tare very lightly with salt. Remember, there's no salt in our broth. The tare and the salt is the seasoning. Ladle your broth into the bowl. Before you add anything else, taste your broth. If it needs more tare or salt, do that now. Add your cooked ramen noodles, followed by your chashu, or any cooked protein you use, thinly sliced green onion, your soft egg, nori for garnish, and finish with a touch of toasted sesame oil on top if desired. That looks like a proper tonkotsu ramen. But with all these modifications, does it really taste like one? Wow, tonkotsu. I I know this is a guide about making things that are easy and I understand what you're thinking. Oh my God, Josh, how can you call this easy when it literally takes over an hour? Traditional tonkotsu takes over 12 hours, sometimes 14 hours, 16 hours of constant boiling. You're sitting there sweating your 
ass off. Your whole house smells like pork and a little bit of fart in the background. And it's emanating deep into your walls and your skin, your pores, your pillowcases. You got Niboshi and you got to put that and make the craziest Kari and this, that, and the other. It's like an 18, 20 hour process or more. We figured out how to do it in an hour and a half. Hopefully it lives up. Every time I make this, I surprise myself with how f good I am. I was right again. If you have a pressure cooker, you can have tonkotsu that is just as good as you would get at a restaurant. It's emulsified, creamy, it's rich, it's viscous, it makes your lips sticky, it's salty, it's porky. I don't think you can get something this good this quickly without this recipe. And that's what this video is all about, baby. You hopefully learned something. And if you didn't, well, maybe you weren't paying enough attention. At least leave a comment or at least buy my book, Texture Over Taste. Why doesn't anyone talk about texture? This is the other half of the cooking story that makes great food. Everyone talks about flavor, but no Nobody talks about texture and that's why it's called texture over taste. More importantly, don't forget to take some time to make a nice ramen. If you pick any of these three, like and subscribe.